the one-year survival rate for stage four pancreatic cancer patients is 18 percent. I'm very happy to report I have just reached that marker. That was Alex Trebek, the late host of Jeopardy! back in March, giving an update on his battle with pancreatic cancer. Trebek passed away earlier this month from the disease at the age of 80. Pancreatic cancer also claimed the lives of other well-known figures this year, such as Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg and civil rights icon Representative John Lewis. Welcome to our In Focus discussion tonight in honor of World Pancreatic Cancer Day. Joining us live tonight in studio are Becky Byrne, the communications chair, and Becky Marsh, the affiliate chair for PanCan Utah. Ladies, thank you so much for being here tonight and rocking the purple with me. Thank you. Thank you. Now, both of you have been impacted personally by pancreatic cancer. Could you each share your personal story, including which family member of yours was diagnosed and how the disease impacted your family's lives since then? Right. For, so for me, it was my dad. In 2015, my dad kind of started getting sick. We couldn't figure out what it was. He had started losing weight. He was already diabetic, but we couldn't figure out what it was. He started having procedures and going to doctors. Nobody could quite figure out what it is. There's my dad right there. Couldn't quite figure out what it was. Um, had his gallbladder out and multiple procedures and nothing. Nobody could figure out what it was. And then finally, January of 2016, we got the diagnosis. It was pancreatic cancer and it was stage four. And that month, my daughter had barely turned three. And, th and then it was just kind of, okay, where do we go from here? We're going to meet with oncologists. We're going to go, we're going to do this. We're going to beat it. And I Googled pancreatic cancer, bad decision. Um, but we, we were gonna fight, we were absolutely gonna fight. But for my dad, he only ended up having 68 days. That number sticks with me so hard, but it, he had 68 days and we lost him. And for me, that was heartbreaking. And my parents were gonna celebrate their 50th wedding anniversary that year and my mom's, she's doing awesome. But you know, he left behind my brother and my sister and lots of grandchildren and my kids and, and everything like that. But 68 days from date of diagnosis and that's where it, it kind of left us. And that's why I'm here today is 68 days. Becky, and tell me about your experience. Yeah, absolutely. I have a similar story as far as my connection to pancreatic cancer and that was my father as well. Um, my father was diagnosed in um, October of 2012 and he made it 14 months, which I have really come to learn, as you just heard Becky share, 14 months in the pancreatic cancer world is a lifetime, unfortunately. So our lives absolutely changed as anyone, anyone's does when you lose a loved one. Um, but most of all, my dad is missing out on a lot of different uh, big moments and family moments that um, we really wish he was here. And there he is right there. That was the last time we went golfing, actually. That was something we like to do a lot. But he's had graduations and weddings and grandchildren and great grandchildren that have come since he has passed. And he's just he's missing that and he shouldn't be. Oh, just hear just hearing your stories gives me goosebumps because I know how much you ladies love your family members so much. What are some facts about pancreatic cancer that most people don't know? So one thing about pancreatic cancer, you mentioned Alex Trebek and RBG and, you know, John Lewis, but there's a lot of people that famously have passed away. You look at, look at it, Steve Jobs, Patrick Swayze. There's a lot of names, but pancreatic cancer, like I mentioned with my dad, it was hard to diagnose because it is one of the hardest cancers to diagnose. The pancreas is located deep within your abdomen and the symptoms are so vague. It's, it's a stomach ache, it's abdominal pain, it's nausea, it's weight loss, it's not feeling well. And by the time you diagnosis, or diagnose it, it's, it's stage four and it's so hard to diagnose. I think that's what people don't realize is that it's often diagnosed way too late because there are no um, early detection tests or anything like that. So it's often the uh, symptoms from it having moved or outside of your pancreas that people go in to figure out what's going on. And as Becky shared, it's misdiagnosed. And so when people find out it's stage four and it's, it's too late. Now, ladies, hold that thought real quick. We have to take a quick commercial break, but when we return, we will resume our conversation on World Pancreatic Cancer Day with Becky Byrne and Becky Marsh of PanCan Utah. Pancreatic cancer in particular is, is the most underfunded, um, least known about, has the least awareness of any of, of the major cancers. 
That was Rona Greenwald back in July 2013 after she and a group of advocates traveled to Washington, D.C. to ask for more funding to advance research on pancreatic cancer. At the time, Sequestrian forced a $250 million cut in cancer research. Greenwald lost her cousin to the deadly disease. Thanks for staying with us for our second In Focus segment in honor of World Pancreatic Cancer Day. Before the break, Becky Byrne, the communications chair, and Becky Marsh, the affiliate chair for PanCan Utah, joined us live in studio to talk about the deadly disease. And ladies, we pick up right where we left off. So let's talk numbers. I believe you have the most current data from the past few years. Do we know how many people will be diagnosed with the disease and how many will pass away? Right, so numbers are really kind of staggering because right now everything is a numbers game. I know on my phone I get updates daily at 1 o'clock about what's going on in the world. And with pancreatic cancer, it's kind of the same thing. So by 2020, the end of this wonderful year we've had, it's expected that 57,600 people are expected to be diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Out of that, 47,000 are going to pass away. Breaking that down, that's 158 people a day being diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And looking at that on a local level here in Utah, which is why we're here, that's 350 Utahns being diagnosed this year. And out of that 350, we're gonna lose 280 of those people. And that's, that's kind of big numbers for us. And that's way too many. That is very alarming. Now I wanna talk about PanCan. Uh, your organization is more than just a network. It just feels like you've all really become family. How crucial and impactful is it to have that type of support system for one another? It's essential. I mean, to have the, the community and the family support um, outside of just your own family, it is, it's incredible to um, walk into a room and look at someone and they know exactly what you've been through. And that is powerful. There is a lot of power in that unity. So the support from this community helps others face this monster of a disease. It really makes a difference. Mm -hmm. What's being done to improve survival rates for people who are diagnosed with the disease? And how is your organization assisting with that? Yeah, there's a lot going on. That's the good news, right? I mean, we're here raising awareness, but there is a lot of hope. Um, the uh, numbers that Becky was talking about earlier, the survival rate, five-year survival rate is now 10%. That is a big deal to us because it was 6% when our fathers passed away um, just six, seven years ago. So there's been a lot of uh, funding to support research. There's been our pancreatic cancer um, Purple Stride events have raised over $11 million across the nation, and Utah is about to have their first one this June, where we'll raise funds to support those same type of research that's taking place. I'm so glad to hear that. What kind of tools or resources does PanCan Utah have to help patients and their family members navigate their future after they get a diagnosis? Yeah, there's so many things. I think the biggest thing is PanCan.org is a wealth of knowledge, but patient central pancan has this incredible service it's patient central 24 hours a day family members diagnosed friends diagnosed you're facing pancreatic cancer call that number they will provide you with unlimited resources um, to help support you your family and caregivers and that's actually how i ended up finding mm -hmm. pancreatic cancer because i was looking for somebody who was going through what i did and this is after my dad passed because i wanted to find out about why and how and how how many other people this has affected and i got on and i found this website and it wasn't this negative website, like I said, after my dad, I found out about the disease. I Googled it and went, wait a minute, this isn't good. And I reached out and I found pancan.org and found Becky and this affiliate. And it is so helpful and so hopeful. That's the great thing about this website. It, it's, it's hopeful and it's awesome and it's great. Yeah, I've been to uh, some of your events and it has that family feel to it. That's why I had to ask that question earlier. We have time for one more question. Tell me how can the community help and how can they reach out to you? What's your contact info? How can they find out more information about PanCan Utah? Yeah, absolutely. Join us, that's what they can do. They can be a volunteer. Um, they can come and join the Utah Pancreatic Cancer Affiliate. Um, we can, we need donations. So if you, if you don't have the time to give, you certainly can donate. Um, it, it costs money to push research along. And I think just education, the more you know, the more power we have, and that spreads awareness as well. So pancan.org, look for the state of Utah. Our affiliate information is there, and we would love to have you come and join our Purple Family yeah, here join in Utah. Our, join our Purple Family, love to have you.
Now this is a cause that means so much to Jason and I. We both lost someone special to us to pancreatic cancer. Jason lost his mom in 2012 and I lost my godfather in 2014. So we are thinking about them and all of your family members tonight. And folks, we've been hearing from Becky Byrd and Becky Marsh with PanCan Utah. Ladies, thank you so much for being here tonight. We commend all that you're doing to advance treatment for pancreatic cancer and come back anytime. Thank you. Thank you, Rosie. millions of people ended up engaging uh, in the tweets around my surgery. It was just so gratifying. And again, I'm just profoundly grateful to everybody that paid attention to this, not, not for my sake, honestly, but for um, uh, raising awareness around pancreatic cancer. That was Dr. Mark Lewis, oncologist at Intermountain Healthcare, back in November 2017, talking about undergoing a Whipple procedure to remove tumors found early on his pancreas. He says his tumors, called pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors, are hereditary, affecting his father, paternal uncle, and his grandfather. His son now also carries the mutation in his gene. Welcome to our third and final in focus discussion on World Pancreatic Cancer Day. We caught up with Dr. Lewis on the latest information experts have on pancreatic cancer and what it was like going through a similar experience as some of his patients. Dr. Lewis, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Absolutely, my pleasure. This is such an important cause and such an important day. Anything I can do to help, happy to speak to it. Dr. Lewis, you actually have personal experience with pancreatic cancer. Can you tell us about your personal experience? Absolutely. So the pancreas is a really interesting organ. It's consisted of two different types of cells, cells that make digestive enzymes and cells that make hormones. And everybody's heard of insulin. So insulin is just one of the many hormones the pancreas makes. And my cancer came from that cell type. So the endocrine cells in the pancreas is where my tumor arose from. And that's actually different than a lot of people with pancreas cancer. Most of the time when we use that phrase, what we mean is the other cell type in the pancreas, which is the ducts and the tubes that take digestive enzymes to the gut. That's called adenocarcinoma. And that is the more deadly form. Uh, my type is still serious. Most famously, Steve Jobs and Aretha Franklin both had my type of cancer. And unfortunately, both those celebrities passed from the disease. So it's still pretty serious. Uh, and in 2017, I had a surgery uh, to remove my largest tumor, because I have many from the head of my pancreas in something called the Whipple uh, procedure. And that was a major undertaking done here at Intermountain Medical Center. Uh, but it's three years later, and I'm trying to take what I learned from that experience as a patient, apply it to my practice, and really be an advocate. Now, you are a cancer specialist yourself. What was it like for you to go through what your patients go through? Yeah, it, it gave me um, sort of a, a really strong sense of empathy, um, really realizing just how invasive these procedures are. Um, you know, to be cured of a pancreas cancer, you essentially need a surgery that's gonna delve deep into your abdomen. This organ is far closer to your back than your front. So it is no small undertaking to get there. Um, I have a, a pretty significant scar basically going from just underneath my breastbone to in my belly button. And, and many patients with pancreas cancer have a similar incision. I'll be very clear, uh, Rosie, I've not yet had chemotherapy. So I've not yet had that taste in my own medicine. But just in terms of the surgery and really coming to grips with a potentially life-threatening malignancy, I do understand that part now. One of my family members died of uh, pancreatic cancer. And when he got the diagnosis at stage four, I remember very distinctly that he said to me, it was practically a death sentence. And I talked to a few other people who felt the same way. Based on where we are with medical advancement now, is this true? Yeah, I, I think death sentence um, is certainly not uh, a phrase I would apply to everybody, thankfully. Um, one of the main problems that you're sort of um, implying there, and I'm so sorry for your family's experience, is all too often when we find the cancer in the pancreas, it's already spread to the liver, which is the adjacent organ. And once that happens, I won't say death sentence, but I will use the phrase incurable. The real key is to catch these cancers if we can, when patients can still have an operation like mine and have the cancer removed here so it doesn't spread to here. Once it gets to this stage, which is stage four, you're really looking at chemotherapy and efforts to prolong life. And unfortunately, cures are all too rare. How likely is it for someone to get pancreatic cancer if someone else in their family has had it? That is such a phenomenal question, Rosie, because just in the last two years, genetic testing has become, in my mind, a mandatory part of taking care of a patient with pancreatic cancer. And what's interesting is 
the gene that most often drives it is a gene that we associate with breast and ovarian cancer. It's the gene mutation that led Angelina Jolie, quite famously, to undergo preventative surgeries to prevent her from developing breast and ovarian cancer. So that same gene, what might seem completely unrelated, drives probably something in the order of 5% of all pancreatic cancer. And that may sound like a small fraction, but if you test the patient and find out that their family is affected like that, it's really a tip of the iceberg phenomenon. And then you can appropriately cancel the relatives and make sure they get screening for breast and ovarian cancer in women and then pancreatic cancer in everybody in that particular family. Is there any early warning signs of pancreatic cancer? Yeah, so the interesting thing is, you know, a lot of uh, patients um, have these very vague symptoms prior to their diagnosis. And the question is, how do you pick out the people who have really serious um, sort of signs of the cancer as opposed to people that have, for want of a better phrase, this vague abdominal pain? So there's a couple of things I would call to your viewers' attention. Number one, um, unintentional weight loss to an oncologist is always a red flag. There's many of us that are trying to lose weight, but if the pounds are coming off and you're not trying, there hasn't been any modification to your diet or your exercise pattern, that actually is a concern. The other thing I'll point out is new onset diabetes in adulthood, particularly when coupled to that weight loss I mentioned. A lot of type 2 diabetes is because of weight gain and patients become resistant to insulin. But if you're losing weight and becoming diabetic, that tells you something is likely deeply wrong in the pancreas and that needs to be investigated. And the final thing I say is if you become jaundiced uh, out of the blue, if you're actually turning yellow in the whites of your eyes, your skin elsewhere, that's concerning that something is going wrong in the head of the pancreas and that's preventing that pigment from getting out of your body properly. So that would be the third thing I'd mention. Dr. Lewis, we have time for one more question and I want to give you an opportunity to share whatever one important underlying message that you have about pancreatic cancer. What would you like our viewers to know tonight? Thank you so much, Rosie. You know, this is a time, I think we're in a public health crisis that most of us haven't seen in our lifetimes. And COVID, understandably, is going to dominate all the headlines. But I would just stress to you and your audience, these other serious health problems have not gone away. One of the things that deeply concerns me is, even if I can get my patients through the pandemic, you know, how many new diagnoses are we missing because our attention is diverted? And so my point is, um, and until we're really in a crisis mode where we have no capacity to take care of anything else, we still have to take care of patients with cancer. We still have to find new cancers. And so if patients develop the symptoms of concern that I mentioned, they should contact their doctor, even by telehealth like we're doing now. Um, don't be afraid to raise the alarm just because we're in the midst of COVID-19. You've been hearing from Dr. Mark Lewis with Intermountain Healthcare. Dr. Lewis, we're so glad to hear that you're doing much better. Thank you for sharing your personal story and helping us raise crucial awareness on Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Day. We appreciate you. Oh, thank you so much, Rosie. I really appreciate you sharing the message.